Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Ben Stewart, who just brought our Easter message, and a great message it was um, from Psalms 118. Welcome right. back. Thank you. It's yeah. good to have you good back. Be here. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while, and um, really enjoyed your message today. We had a question that came in that we can just go ahead and jump right into. Okay. Um, if you were given the opportunity to talk with Josh Whedon, you mentioned him and right. the story about him being an atheist and the interview with the journalist. Um, yep. How would you connect the truth of what you heard in that with the overall truth that he was saying about the greater story? Like, how would you respond to him in that moment right. if you were able to sit in front of him? Yeah, well, um, just what method or tack I would take, I would say, I love the way Francis Schaeffer used to do it. He was sort of the C.S. Lewis to the hippies back in the 60s, and his whole line was, if you give me an hour with a person, I'm gonna spend 55 minutes asking questions. Because the more you ask questions, the more you get to know someone and really get to see where they're at. And he said, and then I would spend the last few minutes sharing my thoughts, more precisely addressing the issues that's real for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so for him, I don't know where those convictions come from. There's probably some logical reasons behind it, but there's probably some pain in there too. And so I just wouldn't want to rush in with a sermon. I would want to ask him, a lot of questions about his stories that he's written and directed and why he's passionate about them and then how did you get to the belief system you have and because there's a million ways you can arrive there and a million reasons so I'd want to hear a lot from him first I would ask mm -hmm. a lot of questions and then afterwards you know I think if I if I only had the information I have now you know J.R. Tolkien who wrote Lord of the Rings helped C.S. Lewis come to Christ and the way he did was showed Lewis, all these stories you love are myths, and what's different about Jesus Christ is it's, it's the myth, it's the same story, but it's the myth that actually happened. And that's how he started for him. Why, why is the same mythology popping up over and over again in all these stories? He said it had a root, it had a source, and he challenged Lewis to investigate Jesus. And it was, it was from there that Lewis became a a believer in God and became a Christian, but it was by pushing him to say, all these stories you keep telling, they have a, they have a base in the real hero. And uh, I would try to focus him on Jesus. Yeah, I think- I hope um, that helps, but that's well, what I Well, I think do. you walk away from, from hearing something like that and you think maybe there's like a answer for every single person when you're trying to evangelize or a method or a track or anything like yeah. that. But really it's what connects that person's story. It's very yeah. personal. How, and, and like it's there, are, there, there are atheist people that just came from a totally intellectual standpoint, you know, like Anthony Flew is one of those. But Anthony Flew uh, became at least a theist. I'm not sure if he became a Christian by now, but he wrote a book, There Is a God, that's about how for him the intellectual path to believing in God was satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Most atheists I've met are atheists the argumentation came later. The atheism started because of anger, because they got mm. hurt. So if you just talk the ideas and miss their heart, you're not gonna help them. Right. They'll just go get some new data. But mm -hmm. um, So that's where you just really have to pay attention and love the person, not come zooming in with a sermon. Awesome. So we did Psalm 118 today, and I yes. know that you're also doing Psalm as the study at Breakaway this semester. That's talk right. to us about that. Like what made you decide to do the psalm study and yeah. um, what can we look forward to next week? Yeah, well, I mean, the psalms are beautiful. You know, everyone goes to them and, and uh, they're the, it's the songbook of the Bible. And at Breakaway, the way our schedule broke up, I thought, okay, I can do a couple of psalms and then you got to pick which ones mm -hmm. do I do? And right. everyone's got a different method. And what intrigued me was just asking the question, what are the songs that were the most sung by the people of Jesus and why. So I just went through the Psalms and picked the top most quoted Psalms in the New Testament. And then for me, just entered in going, why were they? So it was kind of a fun journey yeah. for me. And it was weird to pop into this Psalm and read it and go, oh, wow, this one shows up a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's all around Easter. Because when you first read the Psalm, you don't necessarily go, oh, Easter. But 
trying to understand it and then doing my best to explain it is, was kind of fun for me. So. Yeah, it was fun for us too. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so we'll do something similar <laughs> next week. I'm really excited about next week too. Okay, good. All right, well, thank you for being here with us today. Sure. And thank you guys for your questions. Join us back here next week for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.